I love symbolism. In the last two videos, I've clearly shown that I'm obsessed with the concept. And it's for good reason. Most of the best recently created media has been celebrated for its use of references and allegories. Think of the fly in Breaking Bad, which can be interpreted as Walter losing control of his own meth production. Any Game of Thrones character and the subtle ways George R. R. Martin hints at their destiny. Or Banksy's work, which shredded itself in an auction. Deeper meanings give a work a sense of intellect and wonder. The creation of Adam is a beautiful piece by itself, but becomes even more special when you realize that God's been put in a human brain, or that Michelangelo gave Adam an extra rib to refer to the creation of Eve. It almost makes a puzzle out of a work and adds a sense of mystique, but there's a lot of bad symbolism, like really, really bad. Paintings that just have lines running down to the floor, being a representation of space and time, to a building for a brewery that looks like a glass of beer with a golden turd resting beside it. How original. Symbolism is used a lot in art, writing and movies, but can be incredibly used from architecture as well. You can create a narrative for your building with it. I love using symbolism myself, but even my friends have laughed at some of the stuff I've created. So let's explore six lessons that I've learned from our research, which you can apply in either art or architecture. The worst thing one can do is create a message which is so obvious it hurts. The brewery mentioned before is a great example of this. Oh, we make beer, so let's make our office look like beer. It's so stupid that Homer Simpson could have thought of it. Another great piece that shows the stupidity is the work Shitty by Gilbert and George. Critique on religion can be incredibly exciting and deep in its conversations, but making a cross out of poop also makes me think that you think this is deep art. The obviousness of the symbol makes it not special and kind of childish. It either should tell you that the artist didn't take enough time to think of a deeper allegory or was simply too stupid to think of something better. So how can this be avoided? Well, it all starts with choosing what you wish to tackle and then putting enough time and research into the topic to be able to create something special. You want to make a critique on Christianity, then take the apple of Adam and Eve and transform it into a symbol of rebellion. Or if you wish to create a building related to beer, then flip a hop on its side and take its organic shape and make a building from that. These are admittedly not deeply researched examples, but they show you how you can create a discourse or a puzzle that people can explore themselves. Who doesn't want to create something a little bit more thought through? Being pretentious can be described as something expressive of affected, unwarranted or exarrogated importance, worth or stature. To make work seem more intelligent than it is, you can go really far with the imagery. I think the challenge here is to understand that your symbology shouldn't be too abstract. The Fountain by Duschkamp is a whole can of worms by itself, but with these stupid art pieces comes even stupider critique from art historians. Tim Martin said that the piece was incredibly sexual, stating, in placing the urinal horizontally it appears more passive and feminine, while remaining a receptacle designed for the functioning of the male penis. This guy clearly smoked way too much weed and needed some money, so bullshitted it all the way. Avoid making overly complicated and speculative references in your design. It makes it seem like you're trying to come over more intelligently than you really are. This is of course in perfect balance with the don't be stupid lesson. And there is no right or wrong. It all depends on your context, something we'll discuss later. It's very easy for me to hammer people on this, but to be honest, I've been guilty of this myself. In the coat of arms I created for my family, most of the references were picked very intentionally, but the description of the colors was honestly a little bit pretentious. I said that the color green was placed there to symbolize peace and a friendly character, but really I chose green because I like the color. And blue is just the water, but I made it pretentious by saying it represented our older family members. This perfectly leads to the following important thing to consider. So many works and buildings are gorgeous and don't require symbolism to stand out. Isn't the Great Wave of Kanaiwa already a gorgeous piece without any knowledge of the Japanese culture? 
And is the starry night any less beautiful when you know that the sky of the painting meant nothing to Van Gogh? Not everything has to be symbolic or have a deeper meaning. Artworks, as well as buildings, should be able to stand by themselves and be pretty without the need of symbolism. Think of symbolism as a way of elevating a work, showing that an artist or architect can make something beautiful, but also think deeper and deliver a message. Two works or buildings where one is better looking than the other, but the uglier one has symbolism, still makes the prettier work more valuable in my books. I think the best way to approach this is to show people who have no idea of your process your work, and then if they like it, you can explain some of the symbolic meanings behind what you've done. Great places to get unfiltered opinions on work are Reddit for the softies and 4chan for the diehards. You'll get your critique and know if your work can stand without its symbolism. The bridge sews together earth and water. This is a quote from an architect I won't mention by name, but it's so meaningless and generic it can be applied anywhere. Sure, a bridge is a connection between land and water, but what does this exactly mean for the Manhattan Bridge? When you're going to imply deeper meanings, they have to be recognizable to the people who will see the work or live in the building. When I added poppies in my Wright School Centenary artwork, which I made together with FEP Design, it was to remember the veterans of both the First and Second World Wars. Had this work been for a school in a different country, I wouldn't have used poppies, but something else. When designing anything, you should think about who the target audience is and what their general culture might be. Symbolism that's not readable to people is useless and a complete waste of time. This one is um, a lot harder. Making your own figurative representations and being understood by others really shows you've got your wits about yourself and it can really make your work be appreciated much more. But how do you make figurative symbols and it be understood? Well, there's no set recipe for this unfortunately. It is all context related and requires an immense amount of research and understanding of the people you're designing for. George R. R. Martin is my favorite person who's amazing at doing this. His Game of Thrones books are littered with original allegories that are related to the world they take place in, but are actually understandable by us as well. The Iron Throne is a physical manifestation of the challenges of ruling and how the sword's hand can change quickly and does so often. A representation of ruling power and the risks that come with it. Even the name of the series, A Song of Ice and Fire, describes the struggle between the White Walkers coming from the north and Daenerys arriving to conquer Westeros. I think the challenge here is creating your own narrative. If you can create a story within your building or your canvas, then you can create your own little symbologies within that. But I'll have to practice a lot with this myself before I can give any proper advice on it. I think the most important thing, apart from all the other lessons before, is that you have to consider what the purpose of the art piece is. When I created my family coat of arms, it was to visualize the identity and history of my family, so I symbolized everything related to that. The Wright Centenary work was created to represent the school's history through time and where it stands today, and the symbology was therefore related to that. References shouldn't be added willy-nilly and should have a purpose in their addition. One of my favorite examples of this is the album called Everywhere at the End of Time. This work is a metaphor for the symptoms of dementia. The goal of the work was clear, explain the stages of Alzheimer's through music. My God, does the piece do it well. It's so beautifully sad and it's readable from the start. Make a goal with your artwork or building and then start designing. This is a good lesson in all projects, regardless of whether you use symbology or not. Thank you for watching this video on symbolism. I know that the topic was a little bit less focused on architecture itself, but the lessons here are still useful and I hope you can apply them in your future works. 
Subscribe to my Patreon to get access to all the posters that I create for each video, as well as getting a chance to receive one of the original drawings that I've made for previous videos. There are no drawings for this specific video, unfortunately. Subscribe for the next video, where I'll look at the Magician of Iron. Thank you very much for watching, and have a wonderful day.